Did you know eating too little can actually make you fatter? No, it's totally true. There's many reasons why eating too little will actually cause you to be fatter than you are now. That's what we're going to talk about today. I can't I, wait to see the TikTok clip of that. I know. <laughs> out of context oh. parts of the... Yes. Yeah. This is a whole podcast, by the way. Don't just listen to a clip. Yeah, exactly. Please listen. Yeah. The but we're going to we're gonna break this down um, as to why um, this can happen and how this happens. And uh, by the way, for anybody who's watching who's been training people for 10 years or more, you've seen this happen. Inevitably, you've seen people in this situation. Either that, or you're still stuck in the phase that I think I was in for a long time, where you just think all your That's clients why I said lie. Ten years, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all your clients lie to you. <laughs> you I swear yeah. to God, everybody lies to you. Yeah, dude, totally. <laughs> um, so um, there's, you know, there's some interesting phenomena that happens when you eat too little for too long, and then there's some behavioral things that happen. And so we're going to kind of address all of those. Um, but you know, the 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 most the first thing that to understand with this is fatter doesn't necessarily mean heavier. And I want to say that because yeah. you can lose weight and actually become fatter as a as a percentage of your body weight, right? So if you were a 200-pound male and you were 10% body fat, that means that you have 20 pounds of body fat on your body. But let's say you lost 20 pounds of muscle, uh, but you lost no body fat. So you lost, you still have 20 pounds of body fat on your body, but now you weigh 180 pounds. Your body fat percentage is now higher because 20 pounds is a higher percentage of 180 pounds than it is of 200 pounds. And you'll look fatter. Yeah. Um, in extreme cases, obviously, 20 pounds of body fat and a 100-pound individual uh, would, be, would look very different than on a 200-pound individual. So this is a big one, and we've seen this ourselves. I experienced this as somebody uh, who's a fitness fanatic. I remember yeah. losing weight and actually having my body fat percentage go up. And how confusing that was. Oh, and it was like you got angry. Yeah, like <laughs> how can this on? be possible? I know this was always a, a tough one for clients, a tough pill to swallow, especially when they've been, you know, working so hard at, at losing weight and overall weight, and then to find out that um, you know their body now uh, comprised mainly of body fat, <laughs> and they've actually lost muscle in this process was was a frustrating thing. But this is where that whole term like skinny fat and all that like kind of came out of. Exactly. Didn't well. you have a you have a story about this? I, well, I have I have a a couple stories, but the one that I'm thinking about right now that where I realized how much of a problem this was, not just with our clients, but actually with my coaches and trainers that were teaching my clients. Mm. So I ran this competition and I can't remember if Justin was, at, you were, part yeah, of I was the, part of it. Uh -huh. Were you part of the first one? I couldn't remember if you were with the, me with the first one or not. So we ran this competition where I used to do this, where I, I had a, a friend who owned the fitness wave, the dunk tank. Oh, yeah. So hydrostatic wave. Yeah, there was a mobile one yeah. in the Bay Area. Um, in fact, they had the rights to all of California and we became friends. And uh, when I found out that that was one of the most accurate ways to find body fat percentage. And so I ran this competition amongst my trainers. And this was an annual thing that I would do every year. So I did this for many years. But I remember the first year I did this, how shocking it was for all of my trainers. I mean, I had trained, I had, uh, I had more than half of my trainers uh, get fatter, mm -hmm. according to the body fat zone. Professionals that know how to diet and know how to train that came back. And so, and I remember seeing that many going like, Oh shit, is this thing broken? Is it yeah. not working? Like what and they were doing the most extreme workouts you can think of, the most extreme eating, like the their nutrition was just like super restrictive. And That's so they, they thought, did. man, we're gonna kill this competition. Yeah. And so it blew my mind. And then but that really opened my eyes that wow, if a bunch of professionals that understand nutrients, understand building muscle, understand fat loss, understand exercise science, failed at this when there was money behind it and a competition for three months. And it wasn't a lack of discipline or hard work towards the goal. It was a lack of, of knowledge and understanding on how to approach it mm -hmm. yeah. and the, the best way to go about it. And it really opened my eyes to like, wow, if this is happening to my staff, who's then teaching my clients, how much is this permeating the entire industry of, of clientele that are trying to lose body fat. And so that was a, a very pivotal point in my career. It's probably like year six or so into being a manager and, and managing trainers. It really shifted the way I looked at, 
you know, caloric balance, training intensity, di diet intensity, like how hard you cut, like all these things. Uh, see more muscle building and from the very beginning. Yes. And a weight loss. Kind. And this happened to me too, by the way. So I, I'm including myself yeah, in the same. I was going like, to reiterate that. I, I, I got fatter. I was pissed. I was like, how is that possible? Yeah, I lost was, 10 pounds. Yeah. It was, I was so baffled by it. And what it was, was I had lost an equal amount of muscle as I did fat. And because I, because I'm now a smaller version of myself and I lost exactly five pounds of, of fat and five pounds of muscle, technically the body fat percentage went up because now it's a smaller percentage yeah. of, of me because yeah. I'm a smaller version. So of me. I learned this, um, uh, both ways. I did the same thing where I lost weight and I did the same thing overtrained, you know, cut my calories too aggressively body fat percentage went up a little bit and I was like, what the hell is going on? I did the math and I'm like, oh my God, I lost muscle. Then I had an experience in the opposite where I went on a bulk and I tested my body fat just for the hell of it within the beginning stages of the bulk. You got my leaner. Got leaner. Yeah, same here. And I same did the math. Added. I remember doing the math and I said, how is this possible? It's just crazy. Yeah. I did the math and it's like, oh, I have the same amount of body fat on my body. Because when you do your percentage, you can figure out loosely how much like pounds of body fat you have versus lean body mass. Lean body mass is everything that's not body fat. And I remember I gained, I don't remember what, a four pounds of lean body mass, let's just say. My body fat went down though because I didn't gain any body fat. Uh, so it wasn't that I didn't gain body fat. I didn't lose body fat either. Yeah. It just went down as a percentage of my overall body weight. Yeah. So gaining lean body mass, pure muscle, is actually one effective way of lowering your body fat percentage. Not only that, but then you also, in turn, just sped up your metabolism. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then all the positive stuff. That's yeah. Yep. I mean, yeah. I, the exact same thing happened to me as I remember going on a bulk after that, and it was just like, what the hell? I'm eating to gain, yet I, now I'm leaning out, and the opposite was what was going on before, and I failed that. It was, and I mean, I, it was, you know, there was a lot of trainers I had that were in denial. I mean, for the longest time, oh, they yeah. just swore yeah. it was broken. Mm -hmm. Oh, it doesn't work. But it's I not, look leaner. I'm lighter. But they had smaller. they had the breakdown, which was so great to what you're talking about. Like we didn't even have to do the math. Like, I, and I had it tells it was, you water, it tells you lean tells body you mass, water, yeah. lean body mass, fat mass, everything. So it was yep. clear. You could see exactly what happened. Like, okay, I lost 15 to 20 pounds on the scale, but a higher percentage of it was muscle. Yep. Why? Well, because I overtrained and under ate at, at a high intensity for six to eight weeks. And six to eight weeks of low calorie and punishing my body, well, it resulted in my body paring down muscle at as fast of a rate that I was burning body fat. And there you go. I got a higher body fat percentage, even though you, and that's why it's deceiving is you look smaller and leaner. I look, I, cause I lost some fat. So mm -hmm. my, my belly fat had gone down a little bit and I, my waist was smaller. Yeah. Also yeah. you lose water because you're probably cutting carbs and stuff yeah. like that. But it's, but then you're been, then when you actually are honest with yourself, cause we play games with ourselves, right? Yeah. How often is the reflection of the mirror? Do you look at it objectively versus subjectively? Mm -hmm. Well, for a lot of people who are struggling with weight loss, if they just lose weight on the scale, they'll look in the mirror and be like, oh, I'm smaller. I must be leaner. Mm -hmm. But it's like, no, you're, you're actually flabbier I because was, you lost muscle. Yeah, I was just kind of laughing at myself because uh, I remember even my me going into that um, dunk tank, I was like, it must be the technique. You know, like, I must <laughs> yeah. not be like Breed getting out. rid of enough. <laughs> I'm too buoyant, you know, <laughs> like, I'm like, like basically drowning myself at yeah. that point, trying to get better numbers. Yeah. And it just, I couldn't like deal with the Dude, fact that I remember when I, I did the same thing. I, so yeah. I remember asking him, right. Cause we were friends. I'm like, what's the, truth? his name was Aaron. I was like, <laughs> Aaron, I was like, if, if I'm really good at letting air out and someone's really bad at it, like what, I mean, can you make a huge difference? And he's like, well, huge in comparison to this, but like, you know, 0.25. No, I know. Yeah. Like he's like, percent. yeah, he's like, a, yeah. like the most you could possibly do of the, of the worst and the best person would be a discrepancy of like 0.25. I'm like, okay, so if it's off, it ain't that far. <laughs> no, I did it the same 4 thing. I'm going to try and drown myself. Anymore, <laughs> yeah, did, yeah, yeah. Did you do that where you went underneath it? Yes. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like retching. Yeah, because you got to let all your air out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. What's up, everybody? Today's giveaway, the RGB bundle. Maps anabolic, mass performance, maps aesthetic. Here's how you can win that bundle for free. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we post it to help us with this YouTube algorithm. Um, and subscribe to this channel. And then again, turn on notifications. Do all those things. If we declare you the winner, we'll let you know in the comment section that you won the RGB bundle. Also, we're running a sale right now. We put together a workout program bundle called the Time Crunch Bundle that includes... Maps 15 Minutes, Maps Anywhere, Maps Prime, and the ebook Eat for Performance. 
All of that is only $99.99. That's over $200 off. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. You know, what's funny about this is one of my, later on when I became good at what I was doing, one of my hallmark, successful, wonderful techniques at getting someone who would come to me who struggled with weight loss, who struggled with fat loss, had been going low calorie forever and excessive cardio forever. One of the, my favorite things to do was have them bump their calories, bump their protein, stop the cardio, lift weights, and then show them the get, get show them getting leaner. This was and the, it would blow their mind. This was the beginning yeah. of the philosophy that you hear me talk about on the show all the time. Of I began to stop ever putting people on restrictive diets, and I began adding to the diet. Mm -hmm. That became my my. No matter how much weight you had to lose, I don't care how big you were. Um, I looked at and assessed your diet and I added food into the diet. And, and there's, that, now there's a behavioral aspect to it as well. Right. I, that, and that was what I learned afterwards. But the original reason why I did it was because what I learned from the- you show them a mind-blowing- Yeah. And then all of a sudden I saw, then I saw what happens with the behavioral stuff. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, oh my God, this is the answer. Which by the way, it's interesting to me that this is not the industry norm. Yeah. It's not. It's still like, we still We're have way this- Way far behind. We still have this cut calories and burn like crazy mentality to lose body weight. And it's not the best strategy. No, in energy management and having good workouts. And like, there's just so many benefits uh, to having this approach versus the other. Look at the I data, just, the behavioral aspects are the most important, but the, the, the data is clear on this. If you, when they do, when they do studies on people who just cut calories, they lose a significant amount of muscle, oftentimes as much muscle as body fat. When they add cardio to it, it gets worse. When they add cardio plus other exercise, it's still not good. Resistance training plus diet seems to be the best approach where you tend to hold on to the most muscle. Sometimes you can even lose muscle like that though because the signal to build muscle can still be overcome with too low of calorie. So that brings us to the first point, which is this. If you eat too little, you, you'll lose muscle. And when you lose muscle, um, you slow down your metabolism. You're actually getting rid of or, or reducing your capacity to burn calories on your own. You're actually making it harder for yourself down the line. So even if you do lose more body fat than muscle, but you still lost a significant amount of muscle, now you set yourself up so that in the future, you it's going to be harder for you to, to, to continue and to maintain. So lose, And by the way, losing muscle, again, if you lose muscle and you don't lose body fat, and you lose weight on the scale, you're, you're fatter now. You're fatter. Uh, you have a higher body fat percentage. People get so hung up with the scale, yeah. I think it really screws people up. The example I used to tell people, I used to love using this example. <clears throat> Someone would come to me and they'd say, I just want to lose 30 pounds on the scale. i say, well, do you want to lose fat or muscle? And they say, well, I don't care how much. I don't care. I just want to lose weight. Like, well, we could cut your leg off. And they'd always look at me and laugh yeah. because it's true, right? It's not just about weight. It's the body fat that you want to that you well, want to get rid of. I mean, your body has these natural mechanisms in place for survival, and if, if we just always, I don't know, we always try and go against that fact. Like the fact is, like we need our body's trying to preserve itself, trying to provide it with adequate energy to keep doing what it needs to do. But um, you know, us trying to to basically restrict our calories and not feed it, but then still give it all this work demand and load. It's like it. Well, it's, it Especially when muscle is an expensive tissue and yeah. it's not necessary. Extra muscle is not necessary to have. Mm -hmm. And so your body's going to be like, that's the first to go. It's like, we don't need this. That's why, right. Why am I going to keep and, it and around? You're not feeding me what it takes to keep it. You're not stimulating it the way you're supposed to. So I'm getting rid of it. That's right. And then yeah. the example I gave of how you could actually build muscle, gain no body fat, but get a little heavier on the scale, but still be leaner because now that body fat, that body fat that you have is a smaller percentage. When your calories are too low, good luck trying to build muscle. Your body could have all the muscle building signal in the world, but if your calories are too low, if your proteins are too low, if your essential fats are not where they, where they need to be, um, building muscle is impossible. It's like giving a bunch of construction workers um, plans to build a house. It's like they show up. You got 50 workers. We're here to build a house. Here's your plan. No wood. <laughs> no wood, no bricks, no concrete, no nothing. Build it. It's like we can't. We don't have the building blocks. So eating too little makes this impossible. And then the second part, which is I already kind of mentioned, is you've slowed your metabolism down. One of the fastest ways to get your body to learn how to burn less calories is to eat way less than you need or eat too low of calories and then simultaneously not strength train. You lose that muscle. Even if you don't lose the muscle, by the way, your body actually starts to adapt a little bit. And I've said this so many times on, on the podcast. There's a range of calories that your body can burn 
with the same lean body mass that you have. Your body can learn to be more or less efficient with calorie storage, calorie burning, and just getting your body to think it needs to lose muscle. Even before it loses muscle, you'll start to see metabolic adaptation. Now, if you lose muscle, now you've lost physical capacity to burn calories. And a slower metabolism makes it much harder in a modern society where you're surrounded by food and so on, right? So, I mean, it makes sense. I could, I could use this as an example. I could snap my fingers and increase everybody's metabolism. Right now, listening to this by 50%, everybody would lose weight. Everybody would get leaner as a result. You don't want a slower metabolism unless you're living in the wilderness and you're hunting and foraging for your own food, in which case a slow metabolism uh, is beneficial. But if you live anywhere uh, in any kind of modern society, a slow metabolism um, is, is not an asset. It's a liability. You want a body that burns lots of calories on its own because you're probably going to be sitting a lot. You're probably not going to be moving a lot. You're probably going to, you know, eat more than you you should. There's there's tasty food. It's very convenient. Fast metabolism is a wonderful buffer against all of that stuff. And eating too little for too long, especially when, in combination with losing muscle, lots of cardio or not strength training, you're going to get a slower metabolism. There's a study that I referred to a hundred million times, and, and I'll do it again. Um, and it was a groundbreaking study where they went to modern hunter gatherer tribe called the Hadza tribe, and they live the way that we lived, you know. 50,000, 100,000 years ago, presumably, which is they don't have modern agriculture. They don't have technology. They hunt and they gather and they move a lot. In comparison to the average Westerner, they move a lot. Um, and yet when scientists went down and through sophisticated testing, tested their metabolic rates, what they found was these Hadza tribes people, they burned generally the same amount of calories as the average Westerner and they moved way more. And you think, well, how's that possible? Well, the kind of movement that they did wasn't like this crazy muscle building uh, movement. It was a lot of cardio, lots of running, lots of walking. And, and your, our bodies evolved. We're very efficient at it now. It has to be. Yeah. It, it doesn't make sense for a hunter-gatherer to burn 7,000 calories a day. You can't find 7,000 cal well, calories. Well, and if, that, if, if it didn't happen that way, all of our athletes would disappear. Yeah. Because anybody who's ever seen a professional athlete, their training volume is unbelievable. And if, if just training more cardio, burning more calories was an effective method to continue to lose, then every athlete would be 60 pounds and just a, a bag they'd of bones. They'd have to eat like 20,000 calories. Yeah, or they'd have to eat you know, 20, 30,000 yeah. calories to maintain that, which is not the case and at all. And under the assumption, like food's always been that readily available. Yeah. You know? no. <laughs> it's like, I feel like you, we have to address to the the fitness dorks that, uh, <laughs> that glom onto the studies that talk about uh, that you know, three pounds of muscle metabolically is insignificant, and so that doesn't you shouldn't that worry about losing it. It's it's you're gonna have when you go in it because this is this is part this is messaging right in our space. You know, you shouldn't worry about losing a couple pounds. If you got to lose 50 pounds of fat, you need to reduce calories. You need to move more. And it doesn't matter if you lose five or six pounds of, of muscle along the way of losing your 20 pounds of body fat. And I don't think that's a good message at all. And I think that the studies that they attach themselves to are very... Uh, they're, they're narrow. Yeah, very narrow in comparison to what we know is happening with the body. I mean, I can't explain to you uh, how I was able to get somebody to have five more pounds of muscle, but yet eating eight, 900 calories more a day. But I've seen it. I've seen it so many times happen before. Now, what the studies show is that, oh, uh, the muscle is only needing an extra six to 20 calories more a day. So mathematically, that doesn't make sense. But then you have to factor in the behavioral change that happens for that person because they're they're fitter than what they were before. Also, what the behavioral change around in order to maintain and keep that muscle around that. Also, the behaviors around nutrition in order to maintain that muscle. It's so more than that, Adam. It, there's a lot of unexplained. The metabolism, mammalian metabolism, is super super complex. It's I up think, there with the universe. Yeah, it's like it's like the it's like uh, the the brain is more complex. Everything else is uh, easier to understand we become more or less efficient with our current lean body mass. So, I mean, there's studies on POWs, people who are prisoners of war who are surviving on 300 calories a day for, for years and years and years. How's that possible, right? The human body has this incredible capacity to become extremely thrifty and efficient with calories or much less efficient. This is why you have people with, you know, we all know those people, the skinny guy or girl that eats like crazy, doesn't gain any weight. The person who eats way less gains tons of body fat. How is this possible? It's obviously not one-to-one. It's obviously not a pound of muscle equals this, a pound of muscle equals that. But if you trend towards building 
and you do build, you will trend towards a less efficient uh, metabolism, meaning burn more calories. You want less efficiency in in uh, with the, with the problems that we have in modern society. We don't want a metabolism that is super efficient, like a like a super advanced efficient car that burns barely. Not when food can be delivered to you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> not in a society like that. Right, right. So it's not. It's true. It's not. You know, one pound of muscle equals this. But if you send this signal to build muscle, feed it to do so, and you build a little bit, you see this trend towards a faster metabolism. There are individual variances, but I have similar examples. Adam, we have people on the show who call in all the time and ask us questions who are like, I was started out eating 1,200 calories. Now I'm eating 2,500 calories and uh, I'm not gaining any body fat. It's like, well, how did that happen? I, and they only gained like four pounds of muscle. Right. How did that happen? Their body's less efficient. It's burning more of these calories. You want to do that. You want to move in that direction. Well, one of the strongest signals you can send your body to slow its metabolism down is to eat a super low calorie and do it for a long period of time. Even with strength training, you tend to see a metabolism slow down if you do this for too long. So eating too little for too long um, can definitely result in a metabolism that that decides or a body that adapts to become more efficient. You know, the other thing that it does, and it's your third point, is you're less motivated to move more because you have less energy. And this is actually hitting home for me currently right now. So I've been back on my kick now for, this is I think week three or four of really dialed in nutritionally and, and training. And one of the things I needed to do was I had, like Justin, I was skipping breakfast. I wasn't moving very much. So I was like, you know what? I need to cut out yeah. some calories because I'm not moving very much. And so I, that was my way of, you know, combating the additional calories and making sure, okay, if I'm not training a lot, I better not put on a bunch of extra body fat. One of the easiest ways I'll skip breakfast, have my coffee or caffeine in the morning. I'm fine. Don't eat till one or two o'clock. Okay. Well, that was fine to help mitigate not putting on an extra weight, but boy, it made it difficult to motivate myself to train at noon or one. Oh, right. I just, I just felt tired after podcasting. It wasn't motivated. So if you haven't noticed, like I've been eating again, like at least a meal or two, like I said, in the, like I've said on this podcast many times, my best workouts, the best time, like the mm -hmm. best I ever feel is when I've got a meal or two in me, then my body feels geared up and ready to use that fuel. Yeah. And I'm more motivated to go do it versus me being so fasted and low calorie, I just don't have the gas or the drive to want to do that. Yeah, I remember yeah. years ago, um, I know you guys saw this at 24 Fitness. I wasn't there at the time, but I, I, this became a big thing and I actually used it in my wellness studio. It was a device called the Body Bug. It was one of the first of its kind. Now there's lots of devices that do this, but it was groundbreaking when it first one came out. One of the out. most accurate ones that uh, ever came out. Yeah, so what you, you do is you'd wear this and with relative accuracy compared to anything else that was out there, very accurate, would tell you how many calories you're burning. And it did this through sophisticated uh, metrics. You would wear it. It was on your arm. It would measure things like movement, you know, skin temperature, you know, like there was lots of different things, heart rate, lots of different things it measured. And it was able able to within, I think, 10% uh, uh, error. It was 96%. It was okay, so even better. So 96% yeah. accurate would tell you how many calories you're burning. And I remember I would have clients put these on and yeah. we would see their days, how many calories they're burning. And I ne I'll never forget because it was such a, this is one of those moments as a trainer where you're like, you know, like light bulb groundbreaking, result. right? Yeah. yeah. They would, they, I would look at their calories and they would, and these were people that were working out every day, Monday through Friday. Okay. So Monday through Friday, they were in the gym for an hour and they'd look at their body bug and I'd be like, what did you do Saturday and Sunday? <laughs> yeah. You burned so many calories. Oh, I put dishes away. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I was doing housework yeah. all day. Yeah. I went to the mall. Sweeping. I was, yeah, yeah. I washed Raking the cars. Outside. And I'm like, what? I'm like, you work out at the gym Monday through Friday. And then it dawned on me. Oh yeah. Monday through Friday, you work out for an hour. Then you go out to work and you sit down the rest of the day. Yeah. Right. Saturday and Sunday. I mean, it wasn't intense, but you were up and moving for like seven hours. So it dawned on me like, okay, all of this like non specific exercise calorie burn is really important. And so eating too little, even if you force yourself to work out what they find in studies, when people cut their calories is the rest of the day, they sit more, they stand less, they walk less, they play less, they do less any of anything that requires any physical movement, and mm -hmm. therefore, they actually burn less calories. Eating too low of calories will affect you behaviorally without you even noticing. Everything from tapping your foot to standing up to That's taking extra steps. It's subtle. Yes. It, it, and I think that, um, too – because you are going to the gym and you're going to do your workout for the day. And like, that's a check box for you for movement, 
for that entire day. And that's like the majority of my clients was like, okay, I did my bit on Monday through Friday. And like, I had my hour where I just really powered it out, but they're literally sitting on their butt the entire day otherwise. <laughs> yeah. And it was like, so revealing that on the weekends there was just, just being up and like moving around and, and you guys running errands and yeah, dude, it was like, it was so many, it was like hundreds, it was like almost a thousand more calories each. Well, That's not great. long after that body book came out, they actually did a study, I remember, because I used to, I used to tout the study all the time, or it showed that a person who trained five to six days a week, was it five to six days or was it four to five days? It was either four to five days or five to six days a week for an hour at a time in today's time was still considered sedentary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which nobody, okay, in the gym, we used to have this survey, right? That was, you'd ask yeah. like, it, would you- Very active. Yeah, are active. you active, very active, not active at all? Like everybody would put like even- Very the, active. Very active, very, and it's like, because if they go, oh, I go to the gym, you know, every day, you know, or I, three to five, okay, if you go to the gym every day for one hour, but then you have an engineer job or you sit at a desk all day long, like- no, you're sedentary. Yep. Like, I'm sorry, but your one hour of activity of 400 calorie burning is not enough to make you considered think, you're an active person. And think about it this way. It's like, there's definitely structured exercise, but think about the days that you feel energized, that you feel good. You move more. Yep. You get up more. You play with your kids more. You do more things. <clears throat> and eating too low of calorie does affect your behaviors to make you more sedentary, even if you work out, even if you have scheduled workouts. And we've seen this time and time again. The next thing is that eating too low a calorie because of the muscle loss, because you're eating too little, your hormones actually start to shift towards fat storage. All right, why is that? Eating too little is a stress on the body. It's actually probably one of the first stresses besides being hunted by predators that our bodies learn to adapt to because food is hard to come by. And your hormones can shift and move to less body fat, more body fat, more muscle, less muscle. Okay, if you don't believe me, look at the studies on men with low testosterone who then take testosterone replacement therapy. They're not taking steroids like bodybuilders. They're just getting their testosterone levels up to high normal uh, uh, from where they were, which is below low, right? Mm -hmm. What do they find? They gain muscle and lose body fat, okay? You can see studies on growth hormone. Growth hormone will do the same thing. You give growth hormone to somebody who's deficient or who's older, and they don't have to work out, they don't have to do anything, they end up building a little muscle, burning a little bit of body fat, even if they don't change their diet. What's going on? Hormones. Hormones signal the body to do lots of different things. And a couple of things that the hormones, that your hormones tell your body to do is build muscle or burn body fat. Well, if we eat too little for too long, your body tries to protect itself. And one of the ways that, one of the best ways your body protects itself is to store calories. Like it's like, it's like you're in a recession, the economy's going to crap. What do you do? Honey, stop spending money. Mm -hmm. We need to save as much money as possible because we don't know what's going to happen. Your body does this with calories. If it feels too much stress, and this is all stresses, but we're talking about too low of calories, it'll shift its hormones yep. to fat storage. Preserve. It, to preserve. But not muscle gain, but fat storage. By the way, that becomes a louder signal when you also increase the activity and intensity. Yes. So not only do you eat extremely low calories, then you go punish yourself in the gym, which tends to be the person too. Very few people I know decide they're going to go on an extreme low calorie diet and then go, oh, I'm just going to do yoga and walk. Mm -hmm. Those same people that go extreme diet tend to also go extreme training yep. and they do the high intensity, the endurance, the circuit training, the every day, the 75 hard. This is those same mentality that those people, are saying, and you're now you're sending even louder signal for your body to preserve. That's right. And then, okay, so this next one, I think is one of the biggest, most important ones. This is a behavioral one, which is this tends to result in a behavior where when you do eat more, you tend to binge. Yeah. So let's, let me paint the picture. Okay. You eat too little for a long period of time. You end up losing muscle, slowing the metabolism down, hormones shift to fat storage promotion, uh, and less muscle. So you've got this like perfect storm. And then you go off. Why? Because you've been restricting for so long. Your appetite's high. Maybe you go on vacation. Hey, this is what I can do now. So your body's primed to store body fat. You've been eating low calories for a long time. Then you go binge, which almost always is the, the behavior that follows. Now you store a ton of body fat. And I've seen this time and time again, where a client goes on vacation for two weeks mm -hmm. and gains like seven pounds of body fat. Mathematically, you know how difficult that is to do when you do the math. And yet you see 
Stuff like this is pretty wild. Well, we, when we were trainers, we didn't know this because I, I think the studies came out later, but we now know too when you when you go from that hardcore restricting to hardcore binging like that, you actually increase your fat cells. The number of fat cells. Which that doesn't happen in any normal case, right? No. Typically what happens to us when we gain weight, lose weight is our fat cells grow and then they shrink and that's how we- Yeah, we, this is recent. Product they, of an extreme environment. Yeah, yeah, this is recent. Lane Norton brought this up uh, because of competitors when they extreme diet and then they, you know, bodybuilders and physique competitors and figure competitors post show will just like eat like crazy, right? For like a month or two and gain like 20 pounds, 15 pounds, 30 pounds. And what they, what they found is that they, they actually added fat cells to their body. And they, and the theory is that the body, because they went so restricted and then they went excess, it tried to adapt by increasing or improving its ability to capture calories. So it actually added fat cells, which then don't go away. Typically, they don't go away. Once you add the fat cells, they don't go away. So. Which I saw this firsthand with all the competitors, which it was, you know, they they had this formula of exactly what you said. They restrict hardcore for the show. After show, they gain like crazy. They're not really worried about body fat. They go again. And for some reason, every time, every show, every show, they had a harder time doing the well, same, the same thing. Yeah. yeah. They're like, I, this is my formula. This is my body type. Mm -hmm. I have the same amount of muscle. I should be able to do X calories, X amount of cardio, X amount of training to result in that same body, but I'm not able to. And they had some term for it that they would call it. Like they're, they were, I forget what they used to, they all call it, they'd call it fatigue and they need to reset. They'd have to stop doing shows for a while. And it's like, no, it's the way you're extreme dieting yep. that's causing you to add fat cells, which is making it that much more difficult every time you don't cut for another show. Yeah. It's, it's a, uh, the, the most important thing to manage or, or to pay attention to whenever you're, you know, when you're trying to be healthy, fit, long-term, lean, long-term are your behaviors. Cause that's, what's going to stick. And if you go, you eat too little for too long and then you find yourself binging occasionally where you, you know, it's not like you just go off your diet a little bit. It's like you go way so off that you're uncomfortable that you eat to the point where you can't breathe type of deal. Like that behavior um, is, is it's gonna be impossible for you to maintain a good, lean, healthy physique long term with that. Mm -hmm. And going too hard and extreme in one direction, it tends to lead to a opposite reaction on the other end, which is this binging uh, type behavior. <laughs> um, lastly, people who eat too little for too long, they are at a higher risk of nutrient deficiencies. <clears throat> nutrients are what are, obviously food contains nutrients. Well, if you're eating a thousand calories a day and you've been doing it for a long time, you're only getting a thousand calories worth of food, uh, worth of nutrients that comes in that food. Yeah. And unless you're eating like super hyper nutrient dense food, plus you're taking multivitamins, you're probably going to result or see some nutrient deficiencies. This was very common. When I started working with uh, practitioners who would do nutrient testing, and I would get clients who were, you know, and they were typically women where they eat real, real little for long periods of time. And I'd say, hey, let's, test your nutrient levels. They would do hair tests and other tests to see blood tests to see where the nutrients are at. I could almost always predict, oh, this woman eats barely anything. She's been doing it for a long time. She's skinny fat. She's been dieting for half her life. She's going to come back with two or three nutrient deficiencies. Always, almost always they come back with some kind of nutrient, vitamin D or, or, or zinc or some B vitamin nutrient uh, deficiency was always. Well, I think common. this is super common because already I think I forget what the, what the research is around this, but I believe like the average woman gains weight on like 1500 or 1600 calories. It's yeah. really, really low. And so I think chronically the society as if, especially females have under eight. And I think it's just because of what's been promoted to them for so long. So you take that same, you know, female client who's already only eating 1500 to 1800 calories and is unhappy with their weight and they want to lose say 20 or 30 pounds. And then you cut and restrict that. You can't possibly get, there's, there's not yeah. a nutrient dense enough food yeah. to get well, enough uh, without, you're not going to vary it up that much either. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. when you're in like a calorie deficit, that's like extreme a lot of times too. Like the, the one thing you have is uh, to control is that like, I can, I can limit and reduce the amount of options so that way I can be consistent because it's all about being consistent, yep. you know, for, for that type of a mentality, uh, staying in that, that lean and low of a death deficit. Uh, so to be able to vary, uh, the amount of food that you're bringing into your diet, which is going to produce like those micronutrients or, you know, just any macronutrients in general, like there's, there's going to be a lot of opportunity to, to be deficient. Yeah. You're not, you typically don't see a thousand calorie a day diet and it's like this wide variety of different <laughs> colors and fruits and vegetables and whatever. It's usually the same. Well, actually, to be honest, most people eat the same thing uh, every single day. By the way, nutrients, yeah. 
not just micronutrients, macronutrients, macronutrient deficiencies or close to deficiencies were quite high. You see somebody eating low calories all the time. Mm -hmm. They almost always are eating too low a protein. And oftentimes, and I would fats, see this, yeah. yeah, the yep. fats, yeah, you know, and, and if you're in a deficient, if you're deficient in something that's essential, your rate of anxiety is higher, potential anxiety, depression, other mental issues. And then your body is just not functionally, not functioning optimally. Yep. And it's going to lower its nutrient thirsty tissues, muscle. Muscle requires lots of nutrients to maintain muscle and vi excuse me, vitamins and proteins, um, even healthy fats for your hormones. Right? If your fats are not uh, high enough, your hormones are going to be off. And that, you know, one of the points I made about hormones shifting towards fat storage. So if you eat too low for too long, you're probably lacking something. Um, and when you lack something that you're, that you need, your body can't op cannot operate the way it should. And that makes fat loss very, very difficult. It's really hard to lose body fat when you're unhealthy or at least do it in a sustainable way. So I hope we made the case that if you eat too little, you could definitely make yourself fatter. Look, if you like the show, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. You can find me on Instagram at mindpumpdestefano. And you can find Adam on Instagram at mindpumpadam. Today, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of you know, weak points and, and areas that I struggled with developing for a, a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was for me. It was for me for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique. 